All right, it looks like we're live testing one, two, three. All right, thanks for stopping by, guys. Got uh, Kato and Go Habs and uh, Tom. How's the audio and video, guys? I think it's going to be okay. Going to take it a little couple goodies today. I, uh, one familiar to me and one not familiar, but familiar with the distillery, which is always a plus. I've been hanging out a lot in Isla and Campbelltown, and I'm going to stay. <laughs> Um, we're going to take a look first, I think because, um, uh, it's not as peated, but we'll find out I, now I'm hearing after doing a little quick research right before I went on and it, it does have some peat in there. So this is going to be interesting. We're going to look at the, uh, the Kilcarran from Glengall distillery, the eight year cast strength. This is uh, not one I see very often. It's 56.2%. Sounds good. And uh, I love the Kilcarran 12. If you see it, pick it up. You won't be disappointed. I've also had a couple other works in progress back there, the green bottles. Those are, um, one's a bourbon, one's a sherry. Both are fantastic. And uh, so I'm eager to try their cast strength uh, eight and see how that goes. I have a feeling since this is a little younger, the peat's going to be a little more bitey. Is not a bad thing and then i have had this before and i'm looking forward to uh having it again it was that good the uh kill Homan, the original cast strength this is a nice 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 one this is bottled in 2016. uh there is an older one bottled in 2014. i'm not sure if there's a lot of differences there those are only two years i'm aware of so far and uh that one you can smell across the room it's glorious but we'll get to that second. So uh, mom was really cool and sent me um, one of these pipettes, I guess you call it, pronounce it. So I actually got a, don't have to use the plastic spoons anymore. I got some water uh, that I can drop, which is really nice. But we were not going to get to that yet. We're going to go in the, just to be safe. Hey, Chris, thanks for stopping by. And... Uh, I have tried the Seneg. It's uh, my favorite Kill Homan next to the red wine cast matured, which I, I got them up here. The red wine is next to the Seneg, which is next to the Lot Gorm. And Lot Gorm is really good too. I haven't had a, a, a bad um, Kill Homan yet, thankfully. I hope I never will. <laughs> and same full Kill Karen, same thing. Um, so we're going to go neat on the Kill Karen. I've had these sitting out a bit. I poured them a little earlier to, you know, show, show respect for the year. At least, you know, I usually try to do a minute per year, eight minutes minimum. But I think I've had them sit out for about 10, 15 minutes. So really nice viscosity from the get-go. Don't get any runs. It's just a solid stream of liquid up there. Um, I don't think this is colored because it's a nice bright yellow um, goldenrod type of color on this eight year. It looks legit. I'd be surprised if they bothered. I don't think Glengal, Glengal doesn't need coloring or any additives of any kind. I don't think they chill filter any of that nonsense, which is great. That's one of the reasons I do like uh, Campbelltown whiskeys. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure about Glen Scotia, but I know Springbank doesn't do it. I don't think Glengal does it, which would cover a lot of whiskey. Hmm, it's more fruit on the, the nose than I expected right off the bat. Hmm. Some banana, but not kind of subtle, more of a chip banana, dried banana, not the, not the, the banana. I don't mind a big fan of it, just regular banana flavor. This has more of a dried banana, some lemon, some tobacco in there too. Some uh, tea, some mid mid level tea, maybe some like just good old southern tea. Some floral going in there too. Some hay and straw. That's nice. It's kind of like a light. Reminds me of um, maybe the uh, Brookladi uh, Scottish barley. I'm thinking. I'm hoping. If I had to compare it to something else, that's where I think we're going to go with this. But, oh, hey, Salter, thanks for stopping by, my friend. 
you missed the show earlier, I guess, but uh, you could always uh, rewatch after the fact. So um, it was a good one. It was good to see uh, a Compass Box represent. Um, I've only had the No Name, which is outstanding. The double single I've had, I, it was okay. It wasn't. I'm not a big Green fan, so don't go by my personal experience. Um, but I'm not a big Green whiskey fanatic. Therefore, for me, it was like a mid-level. You know, not bad. Not my favorite. Not my wheelhouse. So, but uh, those are the two. And I had the uh, Pete Monster uh, cast strength recently. That's outstanding. That's good too. Those are only three I think I've had. I have seen the phenology um, up recently at a store. I like. I might pick that up. Uh, I've been kind of stay, staying away from blends only because I know when I get wrapped up in something, I'm going to want to get all of it. And the compass box, uh, the nice ones are not cheap. So I might have to pace myself when it comes to dabbling with the compass box. But uh, back to the nose. Also, some really good peach and pineapple in there, too. Very fruity. Fruity. It's the number one floral is probably second and get some earthiness like some tobacco like i mentioned earlier so let's have a set neat see what we get mm. nice to see it jam do you think stopping by you having the uh, old pulley 21 oh that's hot but it is 56.2 so i'm not surprised that was a that was about a dime size gulp maybe a little bit bigger maybe a nickel wow that's good but there's a lot of flavor that's a it's good and it does have the same kind of notes that i was explaining earlier but i'm going to definitely put a couple drops on that that needs to be just a little bit taken down just a little bitty bit nothing major just a couple see how that goes first and do the food quick anaconda here a little bit <laughs> I'm not a I can't do it like he does I'm just more of a of a twister I'll, I'll do the telex tornado how about that <laughs> Oh, thanks, uh, Mom and Dave, if you're watching later on. Thanks for the hat. I appreciate it. And um, the Easter basket with all the good goodies, chocolate, whatnot. Mm. That was that was a bit hot, so I'm going to have to maybe uh, take it down just a little bit here uh, with some, um, let's see. No, this will be all right. We have a palate cleanser just to uh, let me know what you're drinking in the comments too when you get a chance. Hey, Lochness, thanks for stopping by, my friend. You need to get Leon with you. Yeah, I, I do. Um, he, uh, we were talking just a little earlier, and uh, he has uh, a little camera shyness, I think. So I'm not sure if he's going to get on camera, but he will be around when I'm doing the uh, the live show. I'm not sure if Paul will want to get on at all either. But one way or another, I'm going to have to do a small show at least of some sort while I'm there. Um, I'm not sure if those guys will join me or, or not, but. Um, We'll see. <laughs> they got so much good stuff that it'd be a shame not to have a really nice show because, I mean, we'll be we'll be touching stuff that's just just unreal. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I'd, I'd be all for having a marathon. Like, a, let's see how many really small pours we can have and taste as many and, and review as many whiskeys as we can in one sitting. Just got to be really mindful of starting with the really light stuff first building up the strength, getting to like the heavy sherry stuff. And then at the end is where you would do all your peated Isla stuff. So that's the plan. That's the way I try to do it. Ooh, everyone's having the, the green, the spring bank 13 green. Oh, what do you think? Uh, everyone, you, you like that one? 
I, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, gotta be in the mood for that organic barley, uh, taste, but, um, if you're in the mood for it, um, I think you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy that one. Let me know, uh, everyone, what you think about that. Uh, and if, uh, yeah, I think there's a delay on the chat. Mom said, here comes the dropper. I got it out a little earlier. If you didn't see and uh, had to put someone, this cast strength eight year. Now oh, that's smooth. Just needed a few drops of water. Wow. That has a lot of tea, like a really good southern lemon sweet tea almost. That's like the prominent flavor, surprisingly. Still some floral notes going on. There's a lot of tobacco in there too with the tea in the back end. Hmm. It's a medium mouth coat. It's not overly, not really oily, but maybe a couple more drops. Not too much, but just enough to, it's not hot really anymore. It's just, I'm just trying to get a little bit more flavor outside of the, uh, oops, I didn't get any water that time. Let's see. There it is. How that goes yeah that's a nice set uh, I like that dropper that's nice thanks again mom hemp chocolate from the bluegrass <laughs> Dave says that those are the best after scotch okay well, I'll definitely will uh, pop a couple out here after the show and um, see how that goes hey Mark thanks for stopping by very earthy peaty with a strong nose a little astringent too yeah, I forgot that you, um, you're you not huge on the uh, overly peated stuff, so to you that's going to be a, a very uh, a strong one. But I think if you add a little water to it, Chris, um, everyone, I think that um, I think you'll enjoy it a little more. Not you know too much, but just a few drops. I have not had the long row peated yet. Uh, I remember you were seeing I think you were seeing that you weren't a big fan of it. I haven't... Um, I haven't uh, tried one yet. I do have a nice Hazelburn Barolo uh, nine year. I want to open up uh, maybe next show or something to see. But um, I haven't tried the long row. Did you notice he didn't invite his mother? Invite you to wear. <laughs> um, depends on where you want to go, I guess. The delay makes it a little tough to, to see what uh, yeah family show. <laughs> yeah, but she lives. 800 miles away. That's the problem. <laughs> hey, Louis. Uh, thanks for stopping by. What is going on? Tell us in chat. I like the Karen Nate. Yep. And I'm going to do the Kill Holman uh, original cast strength, which is outstanding. This one's good. It, it's it's a little different than the 12. I'm surprised that the Kill Karen 8 cast strength doesn't remind me of the 12 very much at all. It's a whole, it's like its own beast. It's interesting. I think the water is what I was needing. Now we're getting more familiar territory with the 12. Just, just a little bit. Make, I like this a lot because I can make this stronger than the 12. I think the 12 sits around, um, I don't have it here, but it's probably around 46 or 48%, I'm, I'm guessing. And um, But I like mine around 51, 52, so I take this 56.9er and... Uh, 56.2 actually, and I uh, take it down to about 51, 53, somewhere around there. And then, then it, to me, that's pretty perfect. And that's what I like about cast strength whiskey is you can really play it with it to get it exactly the way you want it. Flavor is just so much better when you have a higher ABV. It's, that's the reason why Dave would have to start drinking scotch again. <laughs> yeah, that, that, might, that might be a good thing. Tell Dave that I do have a long, uh, Four Roses uh, limited edition um, 2016 that I had earlier. It's very good. 
surprisingly the corn's not overwhelming in it and uh it reminds me of a rye i think he'd like it it's very spicy peppery um and uh, i i only had a you know a little little sip just to do a, my own little personal review but uh i'll uh, say some for him if you guys can get out here sometime hopefully yeah, I do love the Kilkerran 12 as well, Louis. It's, uh, it's one of my favorites. And this is this is getting better. It was a little more water than I usually put on whiskey. I usually don't have to put more than a few drops. But this one takes about, a, I would say, like a, which is bigger, a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Whatever the less, lesser amount is is what I would put on it. Then it gets about perfect. This is a... And this is like a 12 on steroids. And this is what you really are looking for. I like this a lot. This is more familiar. It, the the uh, burn has gone away and now the fruit's able to pow, come out along with, uh, and, and, and after some water, I think a little more like breadiness, some sourdough comes in the back as well, which helps uh, teams down the, the tobacco notes a little bit. And uh, not so much that uh, initial uh, southern tea, sweet tea. Now it's more of a nice balanced fruit salad, um, a really good one <laughs> with your peaches and pineapples and grapes and nice, uh, still has some nice hay, some, some chewiness in the back too. Mm. All right, Redemption. Um, I got this from Petite Cellars in Ellicott City, Maryland. Um, it's a bit of a drive from probably where you are, um, but they had the best scotch selection in this area that I'm in. Um, they have a really good selection and really good prices. They do not deliver. Um, you do have to go out and get it. But Petite Cellars in Maryland, you got to check them out. Please don't take all the good whiskey. <laughs> Because I gotta get some too. <laughs> oh, 19 is watching. Thanks, Tom. I didn't even uh, look down at the uh, counter. The um, that's that's a that's a, might be a, a personal record there. I'm not I'm not really sure how many. Uh, I, when I did the Ardbeg uh, grooves, I was lucky enough to um, after the fact notice I had over 500 views on that video. I couldn't believe it because I mean usually if I broke 100 it was going to be a good day, but that one broke 500 pretty quickly. So that must be a really really hot one right now. And um, don't be jealous, guys, but I picked another bottle up of the uh, our big grooves, and uh, I was surprised that they had one left and uh, they had four total. And when after I took the last one, I'm like, how many do you have left? He's like. I was like, wow, I got lucky. So uh, it's a good day at the, at the Telex household. <laughs> it's amazing that um, um, committee release is just unreal. And uh, I cannot wait to get the, the limited release when it comes out after June the 2nd. That's going to be glorious as well, and I'll be all over that. Mm. There's a saltiness in the 12 that suits it. I'm wondering if it has this as well. And it's funny that you mentioned that because as I was reading it, I was getting some briny, good maritime brininess on the side too. I don't think you would be, um, if you get the water right, that's the key to enjoying this dram. Out of the gate, I was kind of like, I don't know about this. I, I don't know. But if you take your time, like all cast strength whiskey, Take your time, play with it. Don't be aggressive on the water. Give it a few drops, taste. Give it a few drops, taste. It might even take you three times, but once you get it right, it's you'll you'll know the uh, the um, formula to getting it. Redemption says the groove sold out over that weekend. I got my brother to pick up two bottles for me while I was out of town. Oh, congratulations on that! You will not be disappointed if you like fruit. And if you like um, sweetness, it's a fruity sweet mix with great balance with the peat, but you better like your, your fruit and you like better like your sweet notes too. Uh, enjoy that one. Jace, next time you come home for a visit, we should do a live show. <laughs> uh, 
Scotch and bourbon. You and Dave could play the cigar box banjo. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll let him do the, the bourbon part, though. That's not my forte. But, uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. We'll have to... It's, it's pretty easy. You just got to have, a, a, like, a light in the background and um, to have a decent laptop. This one's nicely... Uh, it's portable, thank God. And uh, I like this a hell of a lot better than that old Surface I used to have. That thing was was pretty bad. Well, we already opened his grooves, and he prefers it over the Cory Vrecken. Yeah, me too, actually. The Cory Vrecken I like if I'm in the mood for a Talisker peppery, heavy dram, syrupy, peppery, hot. Then I'll go for the Cory Vrecken or a Talisker 10 or something like that. But most of the time, I'm wanting more of a good, just balanced peat with something else like sweet fruit. And that's what the grooves really is. And um, the Anneau is not a bad dram if you like mint. It's a sweet minty kind of herbal uh, dram. Some people don't get into that, but I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm an Arbeg fanboy, though. I love Arbeg. Uh, the only one I don't really drink very much is the 10 because lemon lime flavor, but everything else has been spot on perfect for me. I miss the Grooves release. Uh, Keta says uh, about 10 minutes a couple weeks ago. Oh, well, I've got plenty. Yeah, I'm sure you've got plenty to uh, take its place if you're not drinking that. I'm sure you're drinking something else really good. Um, sorry, not Corey Brickham, but over the Oogadol. Our Redemption says that he picks it over the Oogadol. Uh, the Ugadal to me is a really good balanced, sweet, uh, real heavily smoky dram. I, I do enjoy that one a lot. Grooves versus Ugadal, that's that to me is to me they're equal. It just depends on if I'm in the mood for more fruit or more smoke um, and the chocolate. They, I know the Ugadal has a lot of like a, a nice dark chocolate mix to it too. Um, not as sweet, but. Um, that's a tough one, man. I, I can't pick a winner between those two, I don't think. I do like them both over the Cory Vrecken, though. It's just a personal uh, uh, personal thing, but I do like the Cory Vrecken. I'm not going to turn it down. If someone you know, poured a glass or if I had a bottle of it, I would definitely drink it all. So, and I actually already did, so there you go. <laughs> Tom's got a bottle of Octomore 8.3 last week and love the Pete. I have not tried that, and someone, I'm not sure if it was you or someone mentioned that the Octomore 8.3 was a lot like um, another bottle I like. That might have been this Kilhoma in the original cast strength. But uh, if it's anything like that, and I do love this puppy, we'll get to that in a second, I'll be all over that 8.3 because this guy has great notes, and, and I'm about to dive in there after I have this one last little sip of this. and We will, uh, Santa lost out on the grooves and all the committee releases. Oh man. Well, I'm going to hold on to the bottle. I'm not going to open it. I'm going to hold on to it for a while and see what happens. And, um, I don't know, maybe, a maybe Christmas time or some sort of special occasion, maybe pop that sucker open. <laughs> maybe a few years from now as a, when it's worth like five, $600, I'll then I'll decide to drink it. <laughs> It'd be horrible though. But, uh, We'll see what happens with that. Dave tried the Octomore at the Whiskey Fest. Yeah. Yeah, the 7.1 is the one we had, Dave, and that was outstanding. I, I, the 7.3 I did not like, but the 7.1 I did. I love that one. That's a good one. Hmm. Dave, did you get to try the Brooklady Black Arts uh, 4 and 5 when we were there? I think you might have because I was all over that. Uh, Dram Dude uh, and I have traded samples before, and he was the one that first got me hooked on the, the Black Arts. And um, when I got a chance to try it again, I was like, yeah, at least they're definitely consistent and uh, complex. Just You can get like 20 notes just uh, out of a little sip of that thing. It's crazy. Um, 325 is the price on it, a little high, but is it worth it? it, it it's it's close. I mean, it's a little on the higher end. I'd probably say more 250, but I'm cheap. <laughs> anyway, let's. Uh, we already had this one poured and set now, and uh, this guy is also cast strength. And believe it or not, it's a little higher. It's 56.9, so almost one percent higher than the uh, the uh, Glengyle uh, Kilcarran Eight. So. This, I have to say, is going to be a better whiskey, in my opinion, though. Now, this guy was not bad. It, it, it took some time. We got it close to the 12, little, you know, 
better, stronger on steroids. I'd still give it a four and a half, probably. I'd say that's a 4.25 to four and a half on the Kill Karen 8. This guy's close to a five. Uh, Bart from the Scotch Test Dummies just did a show, I think, uh, where they're doing their big shootout. And I know Scott picked my personal favorite, the Ardbeg Dark Cove Committee release. That is the best whiskey I've ever tasted, period. Out of 157, I think I'm up to, it's the best. Uh, this guy is is right up there with it. It's that good, damn good. If you ever see the original cast strength from Kilholman, you got to pick it up. Got to. Um, uh, it's it's funny because I think the reason why Kilholman is so successful is they have found a way not going towards the real intense uh, peat like a Lafroig Ardbeg is more if you're like in your front face pow. This is more of like an earthier Lagavulin peat. I don't want to say subtle because I think it's just as powerful. It's just a little, it's just a little more peated than smoked, or a little more smoked than peated. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's definitely a, a much better nose, and you still get um, some really good. Uh, it's funny because on the nose you're going to get fruit, but on the palate you're not. The the nose is going to bring. Like vanilla, almost like a salted pretzel. Mm. Some like um, light oranges, not not a not a blood orange or anything deep, but like a, a really light, nice orange. Maybe even a mango. And some floral notes. Maybe some jasmine in there too. Thankfully, not as not s strong or stringent. Not, you don't get like the soapiness like you would off a of Lachlan Loman. That 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 to me was a little soapy. This one is really a, a nice balance of the of the floral and the sweet, and the peat smoke is there too, which really brings it all together. It's funny because for a cast strength that caliber, it, the, the, the nose isn't really that strong. I mean, you can't smell the peat smoke across the room, but you, when you dive in and get, you know, some differences, but it's all kind of subtle. Some barbecue, of course. Uh, lots of floral things going on, but the awesome part of this is the palate. It's my favorite part. The viscosity is a, a little heavier on this one than uh, to the Glen uh, the Glen Gyle uh, Kilkaren as well. This one's a little more stands up a little bit better. Ooh, there we go. That is great. It's neat. It's good. It's actually, I think, better neat than the uh, Kilcarran 8 cast strength. I'm not sure. Uh, they don't give you an age statement this guy, but I have a feeling that um, I'm trying to remember what year they started their um, – I'd be surprised if, if anything was younger than, like, eight years in this. I really would be. Maybe seven. But it tastes more mature. It's going to need a little a couple of drops, though. So let's get out our trusty dropper. And uh, just a little bitty bit, though. I got to get used to playing around with the water on that, on that dropper, adding it. That's might be a little bit more than I would usually add, but that's okay. Mm. Now we're getting some creme brulee. The sugars, I think, are uh, released a little, you know, 
some really good bakery pastry bakery notes come out with that and that's where you get the money it's got a lot of um, really good nuts it's got the almonds it's got you know your Mars and pan kind of thing going it's got your cashews your peanut brittle lots of peanut brittle and that that smoke really comes out Pete's there oh some caramel some molasses but you can also get a lot of light flavors too like the you can still pick out like some vanilla light and some white grapes and maybe even some pear apple mostly apple bread and pear I think I would call that an apple it, like a one of those uh, roll of heavily candied apples really good back and finish the smoke still going that peat smoke is just outstanding and it stays with you for quite a while long finish and that's one of my favorite things about a good Isla whiskey let me catch up at the comments again up here let's see oh how i love peanut brittle <laughs> yeah that's that's what i that was my first note after when i hit the palette when i was i had this in a bar in baltimore called birds of a feather really good scotch uh place to get a dram and she had a a new bottle of this and i was like i'll try that and uh, i tell you that was that was awesome the cashews the almonds the marzipan the peanut brittle and the vanilla toffee the molasses all of that with the peat smoke man i mean you what are you, what are you gonna what are you gonna do <laughs> sorry santa that's just i'm just telling you what's in here man it's it's um everyone the only thing i would speak wary of on a kill home and for you specifically is i know you're not into the real peated stuff and this is quite a peaty smoky dram like a uga doll kind of it's it's the strength factor is equivalent to an into a uga doll easily if not even more because of the abv I mean, you could water it a bit and maybe tone it down a little bit to your liking uh so maybe um if you're around this area i'll uh, pour you a dram we'll maybe play around with the water and see if you can get it to a level that you actually like if i still have any left <laughs> oh man i don't think it's gonna last very long but we'll see what happens so let me get this straight europe uk and you know, yeah when you move out of, out of louisville you get to you get to uh when you don't live in this state anymore you get to pick uh both <laughs> that's my morals at least <laughs> mm. it's hard to, it's hard to get a you know um a way to watch either team so that's why i try to see both because if i see one or the other it's it's good luck and thanks for stopping by john belushi uh i saw you on scotch for dummies earlier so it's good that you snuck in i'm not a heathen <laughs> it's just you know i like uh i like both i'm allowed i grew up as a Louisville fan though mostly when I moved away, then I would watch Kentucky and, you know, they're usually always have a good team too. So it's always good to watch them both, especially play each other. That's always fun. It's hard to pick one over the other, but if I had to pick between the two, I would say Uville is my number one. Don't tell anybody else I said that though. <laughs> Hopefully with their new coach, they'll be able to get rid of all their baggage. Mm. Kill Holman, man, if you're watching, you've done it again, my friends. You're four for four. <laughs> and uh, I've had a couple of the other ones I don't have back here. I've had the Mark here Bay. You're five for five. 100% Isla, not as into. Five for six, maybe, on that one. Um, I 
that's tough. Uh, I don't. I think that's the only uh, Kilhoman I never. I had. I never didn't really get into much. And for Swami, I think the only one he didn't get into very much was Seneg. So there you go. If you only if you got like ten to twelve to pick from, and you, you, maybe one of them might not be your cup of tea, then that's a pretty good track record, I have to say. Much better than some of these other guys I know. <laughs> Uh, hey Thomas, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, what is everyone else drinking? Just curious. I was uh, kind of scanning it earlier, but I'm sure by now people have already changed uh, changed drinks. Mm. I did hear that Kilhoman has recently just announced a ten year, and I am so eager to uh, get my hands on that one. So, so many spirits out of control. He needs a trim. Tom says, "Ooh, well, I'm sure his wife will get that uh, taken care of soon." <laughs> oh, you're having the triple wood, Dave. What do you think about that? See that? That's one of those rare Lafroigs that I, I like it a lot better than the Select, which I, I don't get into at all. But the uh, the triple wood had to grow on me. Like the first time I had it, I was kind of like a little too woody, a little too you know oaky for me. But I think with some um, it, it, it's it, it's weird, but I think bigger gulps actually helped me actually enjoy that one more which is the only one i could ever think of that was like that where it wasn't the water per se it was just the amount that i was like just delicate light sips just wasn't doing it a nice big gulp for that one i think um helped on the uh, the triple wood for some reason i guess it's a mass to a uh, mouth coat thing i don't know how to explain it but yeah, I was not into the uh, select at all. The salt here, it was uh, a little too um, just yeah, just watered down to me. Wet ashtray. I mean, I don't mind the ashtray part. I just don't like the wet, watery part. That's that's the thing that you know. Yeah, thanks a lot for the uh, watching and, and more subscriptions and. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. I got my first thumbs down recently. I thought that was interesting. I, I was watching over time, and, and ironically, I was surprised. I never really had a thumbs down. I was like, well, that might be, must be a good thing. And over, you know, I've had probably over 20 videos now, I imagine. And um, But I thought, you know, sooner or later, everyone, even Scotch for Dummies, Scotch, Scotch Test Dummies, they all get, you know, some guy that doesn't like something that they're doing, I'll get a thumbs down. But uh, it was ironic, it happened on the Art Bay Grooves video, the one where I had 500 views, and I thought, well, if one guy out of 500 doesn't like it, I guess I must be doing okay. <laughs> My only thing is I try to contain the time that the videos are, because I know people sometimes like to just see a short review, but at the same time, this is more of a gathering, it's more of a community, you know, community thing probably that little, little shirt <laughs> yeah the uh it, it could have been <laughs> i don't think i have many viewers from kentucky i do have a lot of viewers believe it or not from norway which i thought was really strange but cool um they you know google analytics is pretty cool and you have you know websites and you're looking at your demographics and stuff but well they have the same kind of thing for uh, the youtube thing and i was looking at the countries and 10 percent of the people that watch are from norway and i was like well i'm trying to remember how to say thank you very much uh talk valdebra i think so you say it something like that for uh, so thanks to it's not going to also believe but but not much so that's pretty cool that um, that they're out there. So let's see. You want another cruise, or is that one done for you? Actually, I, I found another bottle, so I actually have two. Um, the one I'll I'll definitely drink. The other one I might keep for a while and uh, see what happens with the price. Uh, but I'm not much of an investor seller. I'll probably end up saving it for a special occasion. That you know, down five, you know, four or five years from now, I'll think, oh, I wish I still had a bottle of that, and then I'll still have one. Kind of like the Dark Cove. I, I had my own bottle of the limited edition, but um, I never had um, 
a bottle of the uh, Dark Cove committee release for my own self. I had samples from it from some really good friends. You know who you are out there. Thank you again. But uh, that's one that I would love to find uh, and have it to enjoy at some point. But that's one of those unicorn bottles. I'll probably never see it unless I threw down three or $400 at an auction site or something. And you know, once you've had something, there's so many other things that you want to try. It's kind of hard to go back, but it's so good that that's one I actually might actually have to go back and, and just, excuse me, just to have a bottle for the collection would be kind of cool to have because I do have a Kelpie committee release and I've got a Gru's committee release. So, you know, once you've got two, it's kind of hard not to get the other ones, but yes i did prefer the cr over the regular one but the, the regular one's not bad i mean i know some people were bent out of shape over it but um if you drink it neat which i like my whiskey neat i thought it was you know it was perfect the way it came out of the bottle just like Ugadol. um now cory reckon that is not something i would drink neat because it's very peppery it's 50 i think 51 or 57 point something it's very high abv but um when it comes to uh, the, um, you know, the Ugadals was something I like just right out of the box. Well, if you're ever in North Virginia, I might open my title. <laughs> oh, man, that would be freaking awesome. And I, I do work in D.C. and uh, I do get over to Arlington sometimes. So I might take you up on that sometime. I could bring a, a bottle of grooves. Maybe we can uh, have a have a, a throwdown whiskey off or something <laughs> maybe do a show i could do like an on location show that's not a bad idea you don't see very many on location whiskey reviews maybe i could i do have a buddy everyone that's down there in dc um yeah he's he's out, out in the mclean area i think i've got a new friend uh, rabbit and red he also goes by on the moors and he uh is lives in dc actually in, in off m street and in, in near um i don't want to say is it georgetown I can't remember exactly what part of town, but it's it's down there. So I'll have to, uh, you know, get like an on-location show or something going on. That's not a bad idea. John Belushi asked, did you buy a bottle of Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend? No. I'm not even sure what that is. I do have a Howland Park Magnus back here somewhere about uh, it's up there. You can't see it, but... Uh, that is uh, just a run-of-the-mill uh, Holland Park, you know, decent daily sipper, 35 bucks. It's it's better than a Jolly Walker Black, so there you go. If you want something a little different, I do recommend the Holland Park Magnus for something like that. Uh, it's not complex, though, so don't go into it thinking it's going to replace like a $50, $60 bottle. That's not going to happen, but for what it is, it's a good price and a good a good taste. Sounds like a great idea. Gathering of the minds. We all bring a bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. It's, uh, that's what I, um, uh, I think it would be a, turn out to be a good show. Get three perspectives. I keep it down to maybe three people. Everyone brings a bottle. Everyone does one, you know, review with the other guys doing the three different bottles. And, um, I think that'd be pretty cool. Hmm. Mom's asking Tom about vodka. <laughs> oh my! It's funny. I used to 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 drink vodka a bit, but uh, so I got in the Scotch kick. I haven't had any vodka since uh, wow, I guess about six to eight months ago. So I'll probably get burned out and probably go back a little bit. But uh, Scotch is just so much better, I think, by especially neat by itself. Anyway, back to this guy. Very solid dram. Very great taste. It only needs a couple of drops of water. And uh, even with all the nuttiness and the sweetness, it does have some, some bit of um, back-end black pepper in there too, which really keeps going with the finish and you can get some like uh, black cherries on the finish too. It's so interesting. So much going on. Let's look at the notes here. I just want to see. Uh, there's only 12,000 bottles of it. I'm surprised. Um, 
I didn't know it was that limited. I mean, it's not extremely limited. 12,000 is a lot, but you know, it's not a million or anything. Um, second release. So the 2016 is that second because it had the 2014. There's only two releases so far. It's locally grown barley, floor malting process. Uh, it's, oh, here we go. It's aged for six years in ex bourbon quarter cast before being bottled at 56.9. Uh, no coloring additives, no, no, uh, no nonsense. So that's great. I, I, that's what I love about both Kilhoman and Kilkarian, also known as Glengyle. The, um, that makes sense. Six year. So it's not an age statement, but it's six years. It might as well be an age statement. And it's ex bourbon quarter casks that it's uh, done in. Well, they did, they did very well in that. I don't have as good as notes on the Kilkarian 8. Uh, Distiller does not have a profile, surprisingly, for that boy yet. But uh, Master Malt has like their own basically 55.7. That's what their states. This one's 56.2. So the American bottling might be different with that, or it might be an older an older uh, release. But theirs says 55.7. Mine says 56.2. That's interesting. Plenty of years, uh, let's see, plenty of PD notes up front with citrus and vanilla malt in the background. They're pretty generic about their descriptions. Um, But nothing uh, as far as like the type of uh, cask or you know anything uh, detailed. I have a feeling it's probably a lot like the twelve though, because the taste once you get the water right, it's it's a lot like the twelve. I'm gonna say a four point two five on the eight year. I think I might like the twelve. I don't want to say better. It's just. The 12 is nice because it's just ready to go, pop it, pour it, sip it, you're done. This guy is more of like if you're wanting to play around and experiment with a whiskey. And um, once you do get it, the taste is a little bit better than the 12, maybe. So oh, it's a tough one. I want to say 4.25, though. This guy is definitely, I think, a 4.75. It's hard to fault it on anything. The only thing I can... I could say I wish that it might have more would be uh, age, which would lead to maybe more complexity. But for what it is, eight, uh, six years, it's funny because this is two years younger that tastes better than the eight um, in, in a lot of different ways. I like it. Oh. Everyone's in the freezer now. What? <laughs> Used to love the uh, F1. I was mad on it. Lucky enough to see my idol Cinna win it. Monza at 92. I guess they're talking about um, soccer football. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're talking about watching F1. Formula One. I gotcha. It's not something I got ever got into really was the NASCAR, Formula One, Grand Prix, stock, any of that stuff, uh, IndyCar. Um, but do like soccer. I'll, if I get a chance, uh, I'll watch uh, Chelsea over in uh, England play if I get a chance to. But um, and it's funny because they're showing you a lot more. I was lucky enough to see a live match with them and I forgot the other team. I think it was actually a different league. It was like Austin, Austin, say Austin Villa or something. I can't remember the name. It was an Italian, I think, team. But uh, they played over in Baltimore. It was like 74,000 people. That was interesting. It was pretty cool, but I would want to do it again. It was it was pretty crazy getting home. It took like four hours, I think. But, uh, but yeah, that's a whole other thing. Well, thanks so much for visiting, guys. Uh, Oh, Whiskey Throttle, thanks for stopping by, my friend. I, I had scrolled down. I didn't see. Uh... Oh, Dram likes the 12 better than the uh, the 8.2. Yeah, I think that's uh, – it's still good, though. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different animal. It's like if you're in the mood just to sit down with a nice Dram, not a lot of nonsense, just 
pour and drink and sip and and relax then the 12 is definitely better if you're in a mood to really fine-tune an instrument or play around with the beauty then the the eight is is definitely i think uh worth your time uh it's not a bad uh deal and no i'm not drinking from the bottle tonight <laughs> I just got here. You can't go. <laughs> Great sipping in the summer. Saltier's talking to Ryan, and uh, Tom is talking to Whiskey Throttle. <laughs> That's cool. Have you ever made espresso or coffee flavored vodka? Oh, how would you make your own though? I mean, I guess like your own concoction drink maybe but I have to hang out for a bit longer I can hang out for a bit longer that's cool let me pour a little bit more of this because this is really good let's see I love that sound Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get a lot more Kilhoman. That's, uh, as far as new distilleries, I cannot wait to uh, – Gartbreck is in Isla. They're standing up a new operation. Ardnaho, another one in Isla, standing up a new operation. Um, Kilhoman is finally getting to the point where they got a 10, 12. I think it's going to be released. Uh, Kilcarran and uh, Glen Scotia is another great one. There's so many really good new, uh, I mean, Glen Scotia is a, new, a relaunch. It's not really a new distillery, but uh, so many nice new distilleries though that are making uh, the hobby really interesting and lots to pick from and lots of great flavors. So let's get a little water on this because I do remember that it was a little hot out of the gate. Let's see here. I'm getting better with this dropper, I think. Yeah, much better. A couple drops. Oh, my. Raspberry flavor. Ooh. Oh, we need to have a word about Chelsea. Liverpool is where it's at, Saltier says. I hear you. Yeah. I've watched a, a plenty of Arsenal Liverpool matches, my friend. And if I never see Arsenal play Liverpool, I will pick Liverpool over Arsenal if that makes you feel better. <laughs> I can't remember who Chelsea's big rival is, if it's Man City or if it's Man United or uh, it's uh, Everton, maybe, is their big rival. I can't remember. I don't, I watch it, but I don't watch enough of it to keep up with all the deal. But, uh, I like it all, though. Uh, there's nothing better than a good match because it's nice to watch and do something else kind of thing. You can always infuse a bottle with a piece of vanilla bean or cinnamon. Yeah. Really looking forward to future releases from Kilholm and Great Young Distillery Lock. And says, yeah, they've done so much with so little. That's the amazing thing. They're kind of like, I guess... I mean, I, I do like to see some like older whiskeys, like uh, Ardbeg's got their 21, their 23, their 20 something, whatever. Lafroig has had their 15 and 18, and I guess they sold out of it. They still have a 27, 32, but the prices are just astronomically high, as is the Ardbeg stuff. So with Kill Holman, I wonder if they're going to do the same thing where they, you know, get a lot of product, they push out a lot of like NASs. Maybe throw out an occasional 12 or a 10 or whatever, but just, you know, do lots of different casks. And I'm fine with that because Ardbeg is the master of doing different casks. <clears throat> and so far, excuse me, and so far Kilhoman has, has mastered it already at their young eight, we'll say six to eight year age of playing around with whiskeys. Um, there's a couple rare ones that I'd love to get. Cool Point, which is a travel retail exclusive. I don't know anything about it. I do know of its existence. Santiago Bay is another one that's rare. I'm not sure if it's a travel retail exclusive. It's probably discontinued because uh, they have it in my cure bay now. Um, and there's always some uh, just off the cuff impacts type of uh, 
whiskey bottlings that uh, where people, local people will buy a cask and do their own uh, mix with uh, Kilhoman's bottling and, and they'll do their own uh, release. So that's something I'm looking at to get into too. I have a vintage like 2009 and some other things. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what they, I'm hoping that they do a 10 and a 12 soon. Uh, the 10 I have not seen available to the public yet. I'm not sure if it's up on their um, UK site. It probably is. The sad thing is we can't order anything from the UK um, directly from a distillery, which is really crazy. Um, I might be able to if I can. I don't know. I think once you pick United States, I don't think they even let you because of customs or something. But uh, but Master Malt can do it. I don't understand why Master of Malt and, and like Whiskey Exchange and Scotch Whiskey Society, some of these guys can do it and some distilleries can't. doesn't make sense to me. But fair winds, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we should do lunch soon. Uh, I eat a little early, so if you can, give me a call around um, 1030 to plan to leave at 11. That's when I usually leave for lunch is 11 o'clock. If, if that's not too early for you, let me let me know. But um, we should go back to that place next to uh, NASA where you, uh, I think, uh, I forgot what it's called, the atrium. That's a, that's a pretty good, they got pretty good food there actually. Um, I can see myself going back there for a sandwich, uh, especially if they have breakfast sandwiches. It's always nice to get a breakfast sandwich for lunch. <laughs> Pour another glass of scotch means that get me another grand train. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to pour uh, a little more Kilhoman because it's that good. We need to make friends with the guy who runs Goslings in Bermuda. Atrium, is that in DC? Yeah, um, where we work, uh, everyone works for a government agency. I work for a government agency. We're, we work actually pretty close together in the vicinity, in the vicinity, and between us, there's a little place called the Atrium. It's a cafe. Uh, it's close to NASA, and um, they. I've been there before, a long time ago. We moved. Um, we used to be at F Street. We moved over to the I Street, and now I'm over at um, uh, D Street. <laughs> We've moved like three times since I've worked for these guys, but um, the. Um, the atrium was closer, I think, where we were before. But even though we moved, it's still walkable. So I've I've walked over there before. Whiskey Thrall says I just got the Kilcarin Eight. Oh, I think you'll be I think you'll uh, enjoy it because um, if you don't mind playing around with you know the water a little bit to get to fine tune it, you're gonna love the flavor. I think. Thanks a lot, Dream for stopping by. Nope, near Capitol Hill, working as. A, oh, okay. I thought it was close to there, but it, to me, if it's walkable, it's close. So there you go. I don't have a good uh, depth perception when it comes to how many blocks something is, uh, unless I sit at the map and count it kind of thing. But yeah, everyone's pretty close over here. Um, Redemption, I'm not sure if you work. Do you work in DC, Redemption? Just out of curiosity. Or are you always in Northern Virginia? I used to live over in Fort Georgetown Apartments right next to Rosalind Metro Station. I could walk to it. Um, that was a fun place to be. It was like two stops from work. <laughs> I miss uh, the commute from there at least. 29 days, 18 hours, 31 minutes to the best, two minutes of sports. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you work in v Northern VA. Do you live there too or do you live in D.C.? And Commute south or pedal faster. I hit the banjos. <laughs> You're crazy, man. Night, Mom. Thanks for stopping by. Love the color on the the Kilhoman too. It's a little, it's a little. Uh, I don't know. It's probably the same. Maybe a little darker. It's probably just a. Uh, Type of cast. I don't think they use any coloring or yeah, it's not chill filtered. It's natural color, so uh, just a beautiful. Uh, if this is goldenrod, the Kilcarran, then I'd say this guy is probably more of a a deep amber kind of color. Hmm. 
That's so good. <laughs> That's funny. Everyone misses mom. <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> oh my. What Santa say? Oh, Daniel, be nice. Which one's Daniel? Is that uh, is that throttle? <laughs> With a reserve. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever had that. I'm not a big bourbon fan, but um, I might have had that once or so in the, at a restaurant or something. It sounds familiar. Sorry to eat in front of you guys, but um, I figured I'd have a little chew. Santa's my moderator. Yeah, I do need to get a moderator. I probably should give him rights to uh, to do it. I'll have to uh, figure out. The, I, know, I know there's a setting in there somewhere I can do it, so I'll have to look it up if Santa's going to make it. problem with Santa is sometimes he's late. <laughs> sometimes he's late to the party. Yeah, are you going to do a, a, a live soon, uh, Whiskey Throttle? I, it's funny. I, I think I, I saw something with you and Swami at some point. I didn't even know you did shows uh, until I was uh, looking around. Redemption asks, what's your favorite whiskey you've had so far? The Literally, the Dark Cove Committee release is my favorite whiskey of all time. Out of the 157, I think I'm up to. Let me look. I can actually tell you how many I've reviewed. Um my profile on distiller yeah i have 157 notes so um i'd say that's the best now other than that like a second favorite if i if i see that's that like let's say that's my favorite ardbeg right lafroig now my favorite lafroig there's some damn good ones uh one of my favorites was the mid-era cask carriages of 2016 that was really good um i do have a 2014 carriages amontillado cask i have not opened yet so i will be doing a, a video on that when we do the show on the whiskey expo so that will be opened at that point the lore of course is good i think the quarter cask or the cast strength are my two favorites i'm trying to pick between the quarter cask and the cast strength 10. That's a tough one. They're about tied, really, because I mean, there's sometimes I'm more in the mood for a cast strength, hearty PD, just punch in the face goodness, and that's what the, the ten cast strength from Lafroig does. But sometimes I want, you know, more into a different flavor, a, a kind of like a, a cast flavor, and that's what the quarter cast brings to me. And it's a little cheaper too, so it's kind of a it's a tough one, but uh, the PX cask is also fantastic. That's a Trevor Retail exclusive. That's my favorite rare offering I've had so far by them. So I'd say between the PX cask, the Curious 2016, and the uh, quarter cask, and the, maybe the 10 cask drink. Now, going to Bunahaven, the 12 is solid. That's an outstanding dram. Uh, I've had the Marsala. It's good, too. It's got some... Um, and marzipan stuff going on. The 18 is really good. I'm not sure if it's worth the price difference. Um, I do not like the Kalbanok that much. The Choi Check is okay. It's You have to be in the mood for just straight peat, though. But not having 12 is my favorite so far, I have to say, I think. Maybe the Marsala cast is in the mood for almond. But um, for Bowmore, I'd say the, uh, the Doris Moore uh, 3 which is the equivalent to the Tempest 6 overseas. That's a really good dram. Um, but I, that's, I've only had the, the 15 darkest in the Bowmore 10, Doris Moore 3 to compare it to. So the 18 I might love, I haven't had it yet. Uh, Kilhoman, the red wine mature cask is the best Kilhoman. Next to, this is a close second, I'd say. But that's a five star dram, easy, all day long. The matured uh, cask, the, the red wine cask uh, matured. Um, I've only had a one Octomore that was 7.3. I did not like it. Next to this, I'm sorry, the 7.1. I have had that one. That's my favorite, uh, Brooklady. 
It's a 7.1 so far. I haven't had a lot of the older ones, though. Um, Pelagavolin, the 16 is the go-to. If I'm in the mood for something strong, the 12 is a little better, maybe. Uh, but I, I like the earthiness and the simplicity of the 16, really. The 8, it's okay if you got to be in the mood for breakfast tram for that one. Um and the uh, the distiller's edition is damn good too, but I'd say the flat 16 is probably my favorite with that. And uh, Holland Park 18 is my favorite for that. Um, the Kilkerran um, Sherry Wood is probably my favorite out of the four that I've had. I think the Sherry Wood, because I love a Sherry balance with pea taste. Um, those are pretty much my go-tos. Uh, Glen Warrenji, I like the Tussale a lot. That's a 2015 private edition. La Santa, you can get that all day long. It's a 12-year. It's really good. Um, but other than that, uh, Tosker 10, that's, I like it better than the 18. Um, the Stiller's Edition is really good, too. That's kind of a tie, Stiller's Edition and the 10. But Abelar Abana is my favorite uh, Sherry Bomb. And also like the Ball Blair 1999. That gives you a kind of a, a rundown of my favorites that I've had so far. There's a ton that I have not had yet. So, um, oh, McKellen Black Cask, a rare Black Cask. That's one of my favorites uh, of all time, definitely. Um, the Brook Lottie Black Arts 4, that's a really good one. Uh, I mean, I've had so many that I don't have bottles for because I've had samples. It's hard for me to, to go to, to do, but go to check out um, distiller.com. Look up Telex, T-E-L-E-X, and you can see my 157 notes, and, and you can probably order it by ratings and stuff and see what I've given five stars, four stars, three, two, one, and it gives you an overview, I think a nice overview of, of my favorites and what I'm into mostly. He hasn't had the 7.1, but I do have the 7.3 and 8.3. I, I did not like the 7.3 because of the um, the um, Ribeiro del Duero cask was a little too uh, vitamin, chalky vitamin, kid vitamin for me. Just The 8.3 I've heard is really good. I'd like to try that one. What does that Aberlauer run you? The Abenon? I got lucky. Now, when I got my last bottle, I was in Virginia and bought it for $80. I've heard in lots of places, Aberlauer has just skyrocketed their prices up. They haven't done it in Virginia for some reason, probably because it's regulated there. Um, one Maryland store, I saw it as high as $120. And one Maryland store that I visit pretty often that usually has great prices had it for, um, let's see, one second. thought I had the first page here, but I might have to do some digging. One second. I think it was like 110 It was, you know, $10 less than another store in Maryland. But the cheapest place I could find it was $80, and that was a state-ran store in uh, Virginia. Looks like Thrall just bought his first Octomore Virgin Oak. Hmm. 90 plus for John. Yeah. Yeah. I was lucky. Uh, Virginia has cheap prices, uh, sometimes on just run of the mill stuff. They're not going to have lots of rare things unless you get lucky and find like a new rare one, like a, our big grooves or something like that. But the, uh, I'm trying to think the, um, but like your more uh, like the compass box we were talking about earlier. I mean, Virginia and Pennsylvania, they don't carry any of that stuff because uh, they're so strict, I guess, on what they sell. I'm not sure what the reasoning of it is other than that. But you think if you've got a distiller, you know, that's that's or a blender even that's that's licensed in the United States that is a proven track record like compass box has. I'm not sure why Virginia or Pennsylvania would have an issue selling it. But. It's, you know, I'm sure there's a hundred thousand uh, issues with that. What Abena release do you have? Now, my favorite was the 58, I think it was, or 57. It was either 57 or 58. I've got the 58, I think, over here. I think my favorite was the 57. I've also had the 63. Did not like it as much as the 50s range. Um, 57 I liked a lot because it had a close cigarette finish when it was beautiful. This 58, though, was more of a fruity finish. 
And the last one I had was more of like a dark, the 60 something was like a dark chocolate finish. They're also different. That's the only complaint I have about the Abana is it's not consistent on the batch releases. It's a lot like um, I've heard with the, the Tam Du batch two, some people love it. I've heard some people hate it. And I think it's because it's just not consistent on the release, but that's just my, uh, you know, guess on that one. I'm looking up at the comments here. I might have a Black Arts 2.1. That would be awesome, Throttle, if you do have that. I would love to try that, man. Are you in Canada? Are you in a – or what's, what area of the country are you in, if you don't want me asking? 120 for the grooves, right? Yeah, that's the going price is 119 to 125 somewhere around there before aftermarket. I have seen it as high as three or $400 already, which is crazy. That's what people will pay, so I guess it's what it's worth. Liquor Hound mentions the variety by Batch and the Avalors. Yeah. Oh, you are in Canada too. That's cool. Are you in uh, Quebec or are you in uh, Ontario? I'm just curious. And are the whiskey laws different a lot there per province or is it kind of like all the Canada is kind of the same? I'm not, like even in, in Maryland, this per county has their own law. So it's really particular. I'm just curious of how it is on yours um, there in the. Uh, either Quebec or Ontario. I have a feeling that's probably where you are, unless you're way out in the British Columbia or something. But usually don't run into people in Alberta or Saskatchewan, Manitoba, or you definitely not the Netherwest territories or anything like that. Canada's larger than Montreal and Quebec. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I, I know. I, I know my – I even know that none of it territory up there, so – um, but you don't usually see many people, you know, from that area. That's all I'm saying. You can it could be a, are you a Klondike gold liner like Tony Beats and Parker Schnabel? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Western Canada. That's cool. Maybe you're in, uh, in Alberta then or Saskatchewan, unless you're way out there near Vancouver or something. I get to see the live show six fifteen in the morning here in Norway now. Ah, Tak uh, uh Fred Hansen. I think that's how you say it. Tak forschist. Tak I was just talking earlier, Fred, that uh, ten percent of my viewers are in Norway, which is really uh, cool to me. I, I'm surprised, but I, I definitely welcome you guys. Ik snak Norsvenska Alta Elite. I think that's how you say it. Um, and uh, I don't know much other than like a few words here and there, so don't don't uh, don't make me say anything else. <laughs> I'm a big Kent fan. If you've heard of, uh, they're a Swedish band actually, they're not Norwegian, but uh, unfortunately they've recently broken up, which makes me kind of sad. But uh, uh, I like to listen to Kent, even though I don't understand half of what they're saying. They have really good music, so uh, that's a shout out for them <laughs> i can't teach you any hey richie thanks for stopping by wow everyone's uh i might have to pour me another drink <laughs> this might be a talk for cyst yeah we'll have to uh give us a little um warm-up pour <laughs> yeah fred uh if you weren't around earlier we did the kill karen eight cast strength uh from glengall distillery in campbelltown and we did the kill Holman original cast strength uh, which is an isla new distillery great stuff this one i like a little bit better than this guy here 4.75 4.25 i think on, on these two welcome <laughs> and kind of hold it drink uh, light Plus, Morgan whiskey. Wow, guys. I hope you're not butchering his language. That's just not cool. <laughs> Poor another one. Son of a... <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's 1220. It's a little early still. I get to telework tomorrow, so as long as I um, crack open at 8, then, yeah, the Kilcarian's good. This Kilholm is really good, too. The original cast strength, man. I like it better, even. It's really got a lot of good peanut brittle goodness uh, cashews and 
almonds and uh, the sweetness is still there with the toffee and the molasses and the floral hay notes. And I mean, it, it's, it's all over the place, but it's really good. Mm. Hey Dave, thanks for stopping by, man. I didn't know you were still out there. I thought you left my mom did. I told him let's stay in and drink some breakfast morning whiskey. <laughs> yeah, the cool thing is, uh, Fred, that um, ten percent of my viewers are from Norway. I, I'm, I'm surprised. Did you um, did you tell other Norwegians that I was, uh, you know, doing the show and enjoyed it? Uh, I'm not sure how I got out. I haven't like advertised or anything in um, in Norway specifically, so I'm surprised that it's the number two country I have viewership. And but I'll take it. <laughs> I'm just curious how they found me. But um, hmm. and Johnston's a Scottish name. It's not typically a Norwegian name, so I'm not sure how they found me. Unless Telex is a word used in Nor or Norwegian, maybe. Telex is an old 1930s teletype type of uh, communications device. It's not a. Um, I don't think it's Norwegian, but maybe that's what it is. I'm just curious to how they even found me. <laughs> oh, Shoney's for breakfast. Ah, oh, redemption. You're evil, man. That's one thing I haven't had in ages. I used when I lived in, in Louisville, there was a, a Shoney's that me and uh, I used to run a BBS system back in the days, an old computer, but pre-internet. Uh, teleconference door games that kind of stuff and we would you know work on the on the computers and the network and I would run some things and then we would meet up at Shoney's across the river in Indiana at Jeffersonville and uh, that was like some of the best stuff I mean I'm sure the food now if I had it I'd probably be like oh god what was I thinking but uh, back in the day that was like the best breakfast ever <laughs> that'd be awesome they don't have any um Tony's around here uh, barely could find a Denny's <laughs> with grooves. That's the great thing about reviewing a new product when there haven't been many videos on YouTube about it yet. Yeah, that's true. Where would you, where did you, oh, I don't think it's asking where did I live? I lived in, um, I like I was born in Faraday, which is outside of Louisville South. And then uh, when I was about eight or nine, I moved over to Iroquois Park area. I guess you consider that either Lively, Shively, or Pleasure Ridge. I'm not sure what you would, or just Iroquois Park maybe, but uh, lived over uh, off St. Andrew's Church Road, went to Doss High School for a few years, finished out of Iroquois, and um, I, 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 I was not uh, doing very well. So I, I ended up moving out and leaving to go to Oklahoma City to work for America Online back in the 90s. And I just needed to get away and, and do my own thing for a while and uh, got heavy into IT and never since, never looked back, followed a girl from Oklahoma out to D.C. And uh, that's why I even came out here. And I didn't end up staying with that one, but uh, met my wife I've got now and uh, been together since 2007. I guess it's when we were, yeah, when we were married. So it's been over 10 years. There you go. <laughs> Must be doing something right, I guess. I guess it's that many Norwegians follow Scotch for Dummies and they found you there. Oh, okay. That makes sense, maybe. Huh. That's cool, though. Love work. Sorry, my keyboard got drunk. <laughs> Your keyboard got drunk. He's typing with his face. <laughs> wow. You guys are something else. Have any of you guys uh, had the uh, Kill Home in, uh Original cast strength. I know some of you had the Killer Karen 8 cast strength. Let me know what you thought about these two, if you've had either one, or if you're uh, planning on picking one up. I definitely recommend, I mean, I recommend both, but I definitely, definitely recommend the Kill Home. And if you're going to only get one, that's one I would definitely uh, think start with, if you don't mind a good, assertive, thick flavor. Mm. Well, guys, I hate to say it, but I do have to tell her tomorrow, so I'm about to cut it short. But it's been uh, awesome, as usual. I haven't had either one of those, but they're on my radar now. Yeah, definitely um, have to take a look. And uh, Yeah, uh, send me an email, uh, redemption at telex at 
outlook.com. That's T E L E X at outlook.com. Maybe we can meet up, uh, have lunch or something, get out to um, Petite Cellar sometime, have a road trip or something. Uh, Richie's saying that he's going to get the Coleman red wine. That's that's my favorite, man. If you like a red wine cask, you cannot get any better than that. Thanks, Throttle. Hanging in there. Thanks, John. And um, it's been awesome. It, uh, even though I went a little, a little long, uh, hopefully people still have fun watching and have fun with all of us. I like the fact that they have the uh, the text after the fact so people can kind of follow along. I, I'm, I'm so used to reading what people say that I hope it's not too redundant, but uh, at least you can tell where I'm, I'm at reading. Got a little bit of the show, watch the replay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Tillex at Outlook.com. That's correct, man. And um, we'll have to uh, see if we can uh, do a, you know, do a meetup, maybe trade some samples if you're ever in the Severna Park area, which I know is kind of far, but uh, that's where I'm at. Maybe you can stop by, have a dram too if you're uh, on the weekend or something. Well, Slanjava, thanks so much for also for uh, the Europeans that got to stay, Saltier, Fred Hansen, anybody else from Norway, uh, other countries. I'm trying to remember how to say goodbye. <laughs> I can't remember. It's so sad. I haven't had this. Uh, I haven't got to speak the language in forever, so I don't remember anything. <laughs> but talk for coming by. I, I can say that at least. 